All right, big time is showtime and action. Listen up, everybody. I got Nico Dimitrakis, uh, Somerville, Massachusetts native. I believe he is the only NHL hockey player ever born and raised in Somerville. Is that right, Nico? I believe so. I believe so. I'm not too um, sure, but uh, I don't know I'm if pretty anybody, sure. Yeah, I don't know if anybody uh, uh, has heard much about Nico Dimitrakis lately. He moved out to Chicago when he retired. Um, he was a, a BU recruit, ended up at Maine, and um, and uh, was probably um, the most skilled hockey player I've ever met uh, in Massachusetts. Um, not undersized by any means. I think he was about 5'11 to 6 foot, about 200 pounds. Uh, played a lot bigger than he was and uh, was a real superstar. And a kid I really, that was younger than me, but I really looked up to him for a younger kid, the way he carried himself and the way he played the game of hockey. And I was, uh, uh, we're blessed to have you, and I'm hoping that you can tell us your story. Uh, why don't you start from the beginning? Who got you into hockey? Well, I appreciate, appreciate the kind words. Now, my, um, my uncle actually got me started into hockey at a young age, uh, four years old. What's his um, name? You know, I come from uh, uh, Reggie. Uh, he, uh, you know, played hockey uh, when he came over here from Italy. They, they went to BU Medical School. They played for the BU Medical Team. So I would go over there and skate with them and stuff as I got older. But, um, yeah, he took me skating one day, and then he came home that day, told my, my mom and dad, like, hey, we got to get him some skates. we got to get some equipment. And then that was it. I How fell in love you? with it at a young age. I was four at that time. Um, you know, he just happened to take me to like a, to a pond to skate with like some of his, uh, uh, I think it's his, his wife now, but his girlfriend at the time, their family had a little pond in the backyard and that was it. And did, um, did you, uh, did you take to it right away? Could you not get enough of it? Oh, I loved it. I loved it so much as a kid. Uh, you know, that's all I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to play hockey. I wanted to play other, you know, anything, baseball, whatever it was, football on the street. I just hey, wanted did to play you start sports. Just Somerville it consumed Youth my hockey? life. Somerville Youth Hockey? I started, yeah, I started out at Somerville Youth Hockey. Um, played there, you know, up until, you know, AAA, uh, like I would say like Pee Wees. And then you branched and out then, with uh, this uh, Paul Vincent, I think? Or? Um, I played for, I, Mr. V used to actually uh, run our power skating classes at, when I played for St. Moritz. Every Monday night we would have them. And then, uh, I was lucky enough to play for his um, – he had a team that went up to the Pee Wee tournament. He had, like, you know, like a select team of, of AAA players that they came in and watched, and uh, they, they assembled the team. And um, he actually coached me, so that was a pretty cool experience going up to the Pee Wee tournament with him. Uh, but, yeah, every Monday night, worked on our skating and stuff, and no pucks, and uh, really definitely helped, you know? Yeah, that's, that, that's the real deal, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, how did yeah. you end up in Matignon? I mean, you probably could have picked any high school you wanted to go to. Yeah, I just – I grew up watching Matignon, and um, another friend of mine from my town was was into it as well. And Who's that? You know, as a young, ki young kid. Uh, his name is Mark Buckley. He, uh, he didn't play anywhere um, after high school, but we just went to all the games as kids. We knew the players on the team, and, you know, kind of like you do with a college team. You have a favorite high school team – you know, there's a lot of tradition in Boston with the high school hockey and stuff. So, uh, Matt and I was like 10 minutes, you know, from my house. And that was a team I, I kind of gravitated towards. We had uh, one kid from my hometown, Danny Lupo, who played there. That was a little older than me. I know Danny um, Lupo, RIP Danny Lupo. Yeah, rest in peace to Danny. Um, yeah, great athlete from Somerville. Another good one. Uh, sick football player. Uh hockey, everything, you know, good, just a good athlete. So a buddy of mine was uh, the quarterback at Matt on high school and uh, Danny was best friends with him. So I would, I'd see him a lot. So obviously followed him. And then, you know, those guys like Dougie Wood, who went to BU, who we sure. looked up to. Uh, yeah. Dougie's Santinelli. a great guy. Um, Mike Santinelli. He's my age. Great hockey player. Yeah. So those Left are the guys shot. that we, Jerry Keefe, you know, we looked up to those guys. And, yeah. Uh, Jerry's a buddy. I, of mine. I wanted to go there and, and, and keep it going. And that's why I kind of went there, you know? Awesome. Awesome. And yeah. uh, can you take us to the recruiting process with the, uh, the colleges? I know you had your pick of the colleges. Yeah, it just kind of happened organically. Um, I think it was June, junior year after the super eight. Uh, we were in like an assembly at school and I got a phone call from uh, Jack Parker. They called me out of the assembly and, and that was like the first time I had talked to a D one school and went there and 
you know, I grew up going over the BU at, uh, to watch their practices and hang out with the guys. It was, you know, something I wanted to do after school that I look forward to, you know? So, uh, yeah, that was definitely a huge dream. Went to all their games, you know, the Midnight Madnesses and all that stuff. And then actually got an opportunity to go to the Midnight Madness as a recruit. So, yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was What's great, the Midnight Madness? Experience. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just the first practice of the year that they have that they invite their recruits to. And it's at midnight. Wow. You know? That's and kind of uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. They have it in basketball more, I would say, more often. Um, but that was like their first official practice. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, yeah. So I was supposed to go to BU and then, you know, I didn't, I didn't end up going there, but. What um, happened? Uh, you don't you mind know, me asking. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, certain, certain things, uh, you know, I was, I was originally going there on, on a, on a, a full ride and, and then, uh, things didn't work out. I went to, uh, they set me up at Avon um, because at that year they, they started the clearinghouse. And, uh, you know, so I had to get a certain uh, score on the SATs and I was short 30 points. So uh, they set me up at Avon. Such bullshit. Avon, <laughs> Such and, uh, fucking bullshit. Dude. Yeah, but it is what it is. At the time you're upset because that was a big dream of mine. You know, that was, I was locked in to go there. Um, you know, and they said basically I could, you know, sign, you know, once I passed the test and they came down and they, they shortened the deal to two years. And, you know, at that time, like, I don't know, 80,000, I don't think it was, or uh, for two more, two, two years and just, just wasn't going to work out. And then uh, end up going to prep school and, and playing there and having, you know, a good season. And there was a coach that I forget what school it was. I can't remember if it was Loomis or one of those prep schools, but the guy actually played at Maine and, uh, I had a good game and, and he called the Grant Stanbrook and Grant Stanbrook's, uh, you know, thank God I got to meet that guy in my life. Who's a, I a love big Grant. Yeah. yeah. One of the best, best hockey people out there. Yep. Best, best guy ever. And, yep. um, you know, he, he actually drove down and from Maine and it goes like an eight hour ride to give me my, you know, my plane tickets. And you saw the care that he showed and, you know, the passion in the game and the way he talked and, you know, like I said, everything happens for a reason. Like I would never met Grant if I went to BU probably, you know? So um, obviously at the time it, it was terrible. I, I wanted to go there so bad, but you know, things well, are, uh, things are I'm, great I'm, at Maine and uh, had, we had a great career, great teams. And yeah, you know, I don't want to interrupt you, but I gotta, I gotta say this. Your senior year. <laughs> wow. You had 43 <laughs> games played, 20 goals, 31 assists. <laughs> But 51 points. This is college hockey, boys. And <laughs> plus 11 with 44 pims. And uh, yeah, you should have left after your junior year, I guess. Oh my God. Yeah, I had uh, a couple you... injuries in college that. Um, oh, what happened? I, I wasn't playing full. I didn't get any really full seasons in my sophomore year. And um, in junior year, uh, I had a, a shoulder issue, tore my bicep off the shoulder and the labrum and everything. And. Uh, you know, I was uh, – I had decent years, you know, but – Decent. I think um, I want to go to the uh, – I mean, I, you had a, probably every college – No, I, they, um, you know, like everybody has things, you know, every, every player uh, needs to work on things and obviously work at all the skills in the game. Um, but I, I had to really commit to, to the off-ice stuff, you know, like that, that's, a, that's a huge thing, especially now. It's Everybody does it, um, you know, committing that way and – you know, growing up and maturing, I would say, you know, um, I was pretty athletic as a kid. So I, like that stuff came easy, kind of easier to me. Um, but understand the game and learn the game in Maine and playing a 200 foot game and being responsible defensively, you know, the little details of the game, which I learned a lot at Maine. I didn't really, you know, have much of that before that because, you know, well, you, won a hard, hockey, you won an NCAA championship there, I think, as uh, what, your sophomore or junior year? No, my freshman year. Freshman actually. year, geez. Yeah, I think you. Year. I think you won the winning goal. Did you score the winning goal? I'm pretty um, sure I remember you scoring with like two seconds left. One of them no, games. That, I don't remember. That that goal was um, hockey East final my sophomore okay. year. Okay. That was a uh, against BC at the Garden in the hockey East, and then uh, freshman year. No, I I, I scored the goal, uh, tying goal in the um, semifinal game versus BC, and then. Uh, set up the game winner and then in the final we played UNH and beat them in overtime it was a great game um I had a I had a goal in that game as well 
Uh, but we had, we had great teams. We had such good uh, senior leaders, you know, like David Cullen, Stevie Correa, Jason Vitorino, Marcus Gustafson, you know, then you got Alfie Michaud, and then that's like just solid guys. Brendan Walsh was up there. He's a huge part of our locker room. Um, and they infused us with uh, – there was another senior, Bobby Stewart, great guy. Yeah. Know, just hard I, mean, I knew from Bobby Western Stewart. Canada. Yeah, he um, played in Boise with me. Yeah, yeah, that's him. And uh, and then they injected an unbelievable fresh, freshman class. There was like six of us that they that just jumped in and started, you know, contributing. Um, I don't think great. any. I don't think any like you did though. <laughs> no, we had some, we had we had. I we don't had know, two. dude. You were the best player on the ice, dude. <laughs> no, Listen, let's move that. on. Let's move on from the college because you have a lot of <laughs> hockey to talk about today. All right. Oh, here it is. Yeah, 5'11", 193, uh, Boston, Mass., May 21st, 1979. And you were a uh, 155th. I can't believe you didn't get picked in the first round. That's crazy. You lasted until the fifth round. Can you tell me about the draft process? How the fuck does Nico Dimitrakis go in the fifth <laughs> round? This is nuts. That's what I'm – this know. is why I'm Man. doing my hockey show. Because people want – they need to know about the real – the real – I'm the real deal. You're the real deal. Tell me about your draft <laughs> process. Uh, well, I wasn't really rated like, you know, I was a 5'11 and not a, you know, six foot four at that time. That's, I would say that's what they were kind of looking for, but there wasn't too many small guys that were getting drafted in the top two rounds from what I can remember. No, they weren't. Um, uh, but I mean, still your skill level was yeah. far above everybody else's in the country. Yeah. Today's game, different story. Uh, but you know, those, that's what, that's what it was. I wasn't really on the, um, on the draft list until uh, I would say like freshman year at Maine, you know, um, started to get a little more attention that way. But like, you know, I just, just kept working at it. And, and there was guys in my team that at Maine that were drafted in the first round and rated and stuff. And, you know, you're working against these guys every day and other guys uh, upperclassmen that are going to play pro hockey. So, you know, you just gotta, whatever happens, happens. Like, everybody's path's different. Some guys are rated at 15, 16 years old now. You know, some guys, it, it takes till you're 20. Everybody's cards, are, you know, that they're dealt are different. And you just got to kind of work hard and move forward from all of it, all of it, you know. Um, Were but you the surprised? Process, so the, no, so I wasn't on it. And then all of a sudden, actually, a couple of my teammates came up to my room one day and said, hey, you're on the list. You know, they were happy for me. Um, so then, you know, then the agents, a couple agents call and then, you know, you meet with them, and I picked an agent out of uh, New York, George Bezos. And did you have? And um, that... Sorry, did you have? Go any, ahead. Um, well, I, the reason why I know to ask about this is, uh, anyways, I know that like my draft process, how it went. Did you have agents calling you, local guys, or anything like that? No, no, I didn't what? really. I didn't have any local agents calling. What? I had uh, I had a West Coast guy, and I had uh, somebody from New York. You know, their firm was in New York, and uh, yeah, no, I don't know. I think at that time in Boston, it was like, I think Bobby Orr just started, like, with Kropelka. Yeah, I that was who I signed with. Yeah, Big so, <laughs> yeah, no, I, they were great guys. And, you know, Kropelka's from Arlington. Just didn't, you know, I guess didn't work He's out. He's a maggot. Or, I don't want to I don't want to cut you off, but that dude's a maggot. But anyways. No, nah, I, well, I, I've never had any problems with the guy, like. He's always been nice to me. So, but like, we never even got to that point to where, you know, he was going to represent me or anything. Why not? Um, but I went, I went with Bezos. I went with Bezos. You know, they showed interest. And obviously, you want someone to show interest in you that's going to go to bat for you. And um, yeah, then, then that summer, it started meeting with a couple teams, like at the draft. It actually was in Boston that year in 99. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I interviewed with like four or five teams. And then, uh, you know, I didn't think I was going to get drafted by San Jose. Their, their draft uh, meeting was like two hours long. And um, I came out of there thinking, no way they're going to pick me. And they actually, they picked me. And so, who uh, was the main guy interviewing you? Uh, Timmy Burke. Oh, situate guy, I believe. Is he? Or, yeah, yeah, I think he's from, I know Chip Burke is his brother. He's from, um, I know the Burks are from situate. I believe he is a situate guy. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I'm not positive I, on that. I, I'm but pretty I think sure he, he was. I think he might be in like Melrose, like that north. All right, different guy then, because there is a Burke family. Uh, a Timmy Burke <coughs> played hockey at Harvard and then became a front office guy, I believe. I think yeah, there's no. a couple Timmy Burks. There's a no. Chip Burke. Chip Burke was the the doctor for the Penguins too. He was a situ guy. That's how maybe I'm confusing him. 
But uh, so we go to San Jose. What's your first camp like? First great uh, camp was uh, anything was that actually, like was uh, like like you didn't no, expect. No, just you know, no, you knew it was going to be tough, right? Like you're going to an NHL camp, it's it's going to be something different than you know. We worked we worked extremely hard in Maine, like we had you know tough practices, and but now you got guys that are you know as good as you, if not better, right? Um, guys you looked up to, so that's like a little period where you kind of have to get over. Anybody like impress you, know, Nico? Oh yeah. Um, uh, Timo Solani was on my team that year at camp. Uh, who else do we have? Patty Marlowe, uh, Vinny Danfus, Marco Sturm. Um, we had Nabokov was a goalie. Um, yeah, no, Timo Solani was unbelievable. What a great guy! Like, such a good skater, smart vision. Obviously, scored so many goals in his career. Is just a great player. Uh, Did he teach you anything? Yeah. Did you ever have like a uh, something where that like you know? Yeah, you of like course. To... Like you learn, you learn how to play to play at that pace. Like, you know, moving the puck, giving and going, and doing things quick. Uh, it's fun to play with those types of players. You know, making making plays. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, he's he's one of the best of all time to do it. And it was privileged to play to play with him you know well i mean I you to, played with i got to played. actually play with him i got to play with him for 21 games my first year it was unbelievable well that's what i'm saying you were you were a featured player you were uh you uh i played the point on the power play on a lot of teams uh also in the nhl i did play the point on the second power play um you played the point on the power play tell us do you like doing that i loved it yeah i know i loved it i actually i did a little bit of both i um half wall? actually a, actually yeah i played the half wall a bit but like going back to high school, how this all happened, uh, somebody broke their leg, a defenseman broke their leg. And, and so I, my coach was like, I need you to play D this year. So I actually moved back to D as a junior in high school and played D, you know, like I wasn't a defensive minded player at that time, you know? So, yeah. but it was good to learn from both sides, you know, learn the game from both ends of the ice and see what the D are seeing when they're coming up the ice, vice versa, what the forwards need to do to get open. Cause you see in practice so many times guys yelling at each other, like, move the puck or get open. You know, yeah. you're not open. I can't move it to you. Yeah, sure. So, no, that was good. And then, like, obviously, like, playing D, it's a little bit of different skating, a lot of forward to backwards and a lot of hip hip transitions and stuff like that. So that helped me. And then, you know, when I went to Maine, uh, Coach Walsh started mixing me in on a power play at the right point. And uh, that was it. I felt comfortable doing it up there. I like being the – that's nice, a good position to be the quarterback and kind of dictate what goes on in the PP, you know. I used to love playing catcher in baseball and shortstop because I touch the, <laughs> you get to touch the ball all the time. Well, I mm -hmm. pitched, I played shortstop and I played catch. So listen, we went from uh, San Jose. We had a good run in San Jose. Um, yeah. Who was coaching there, by the way? Uh, coach at the time was uh, Ron Wilson, uh, who else? Rob Zettler and uh, Tim Hunter. Rob Zettler? Is that the guy that played in um, – no, that's uh, the. He he played uh, he played for the Capitals, I believe. Yeah, there's a, who's the guy with the Z on the end of his name? He's a left shot. He played for the Bruins a little bit at the end. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. Shit, I think he was number. Four he might have. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not 100 percent sure. So um, we went Doug, to uh, Doug, Doug. Doug Wilson was the GM there. Yeah, great Dougie Wilson, player. great hot. Yeah, just uh, got defenseman. Into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, defenseman, yeah. Chicago. Um, awesome, awesome puck mover. Uh, yep. Great head of hair. <laughs> oh, the best, the best hair. The best. So hair. the lockout year, we have you going over to uh, uh, Lugano or or Long No, I went. I went to uh, Lang now. Actually, that Langnau. year I was up in Maine. I was at Maine training up there. Uh, um, with the team and it was kind of cool to uh be able to help those guys and, and sit back and, and watch their games on the weekends and then practice with them during the week and train did you go um, full pads with them yeah yeah awesome awesome yeah it was, it was unbelievable um billy ryan boston guy he was uh up in maine as a freshman billy um, is the best he's the one that yeah. said you should get nico i said you think he knew it <laughs> i said do you think he would and i chased it out for two days so thank me and you always got along awesome I remember, I, I think I went to your house after one of the skates one day. We went to lunch over in Somerville. Yeah, when we played at, uh, we were at BU, I think. Yeah, yeah. Me yeah, and you we were skated. boys. That's where I met you. That's where I met you at BU. Yep. We, that was the first time I ever met you. I've never seen a kid. So, uh, not to your face. I was old. I couldn't let you know this right off the rip. But I used to call <laughs> you, I used to call you Nikki Velcro. 
And they were like, what the fuck is Nikki? I go, you ever see him carry the puck? I've never seen, I'm not kidding. I've never seen a kid with better uh, hands. You had the best hands I've ever seen. Uh, Thank and you. also, I you had an it. awesome center of gravity. Um, you couldn't get knocked off the puck. You were amazing. And um, you got my kids coming down. That's you guys all right. can't let's, be in this. Let's, let's, say, let's say hi to them if you want. You want to say hello real quick? Yeah, Come say, and say hello. hello real quick. Of course. Hey, this is, we're this talking. Is Demi Hi. And Jay. Hi, guys. Hey, That's don't Billy. be shy. Oh. Hey, we're talking to your dad because he's. I a don't big... think I can hear you. I have the earpiece. All right, up. you tell him what I'm saying. We're talking to your dad because we're he's a stud hockey, hockey player. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking hockey. Yeah. Anyways, uh, listen. No. Can we move okay. on to? Uh, yes, when, we can move on. Once we left uh, yeah, love Switzerland. Love Thanks, guys. Love you guys. I said thank listen, you. Hey, so we, we got traded. Sorry about that. How did we get traded? How did San Jose trade one of their best young prospects uh, in 100 years? I don't know. Fight I got traded the at the deadline. Well, yeah, I don't this, know. I, someone else you know, wanted you. Maybe. More. Some, well, somebody else. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Like, was it was it the best, uh, you know, relationship? Who did they trade you, know, you I for? I was trying to – I'm a young guy trying to find my way. And, you know, I ended up getting traded, like, uh, right at the 3 o'clock deadline. Um to Philly. So, you know, it happened, you know, obviously I didn't want to leave, but it happened. And, uh, that was a cool experience too. I got to go there and play with some good players and, and learn from them too. Like Peter Forsberg and, you know, can we Mike backtrack Canu a sec? Canubo. Can we, ba I yeah. want to backtrack. I want to talk yeah. about where did you live in, in, in San Jose? Where did you live? Did you like living out there? I didn't yeah, even the first ask you off. The first, year, the first year I lived with, uh, Todd Harvey's family. Okay. Um, and I played against uh, him in junior. Towards the end of that year, uh, I was able to get a place, and I, and I moved to a town called Los Gatos. Um, lived by myself there, and then um, the following year, um, I lived in uh, Almaden Valley. Was there big? Uh, the was there big money out that way? This, I mean, I I just think of San Jose like yeah, well, computer. The, 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 yeah, the dot com area, and uh, you know everything's out there. Right, right in the downtown area, uh, you know, Google and all Microsoft and everything like that, Apple. How far is um, uh, San Jose from San Francisco? Uh, it's about, I'd say, 40 to 50, 45 That's minutes. That's it? Yeah, 45 to 50 minutes. So San Fran, did, I, I was always wondering why they never got a hockey team. They don't really need one. They got San Jose. Yeah, no, we have a lot of fans in that area. They, they originally started playing, I believe, in the Cow Palace, which is it, it's close to the San Francisco. It's the okay. first rink they had. Um, and then they moved to San Jose at a later date, but no, we would go down there all the time for dinner and stuff. And we had a couple of days off, stuff like that. It was good. I got a story for you. My buddy, he, uh, he called me one time and, um, I didn't know this till after, but he's like, how's it going? I'm like, Oh, it's going good. Except 12 of our guys <laughs> got, uh, sick on the plane. So we had to like fly in seven guys from like Wilkes-Barre in San Jose. My buddy loaded it up against us. Cause we got beat like seven, nothing. It was funny anyway. <laughs> well, listen. It's a listen, tough place to play as an opponent. Ex ex absolutely. Oh, yeah, it yeah, was. Great it, fans. Great yeah. fans. Yeah, Some it was. Some of the best fans, for sure. Yeah, definitely. So, when yeah. we went to Philly, uh, who was the coach and who was it? Was Bobby Clark was the uh, GM? Yeah, Bobby Clark was the GM. Ken Hitchcock was the head coach. Um, How did you like uh, Hitch? Yeah, he was good. Hitch was good. Uh, Better than Wilson? Different styles. Totally different, you know. Um. Did you have a better I, relationship with Hitch than you did with Wally? I, I was a young guy, and I, I don't even know, like, I had a decent relationship with both of them. But as a young player, you don't really, you know, it takes a few years before you get that, I wouldn't say, like, you know, buddy or friend relationship, but you, where you can actually talk on a different level, right? So as a yeah. young guy, when I was coming up and when you were coming up, you just kind of told what to do and, you know, kept your mouth shut and worked hard and, you know, the old guys kind of ran the room. I feel like it's changed a little bit now um, in today's game. But, no, oh, so. just, I just feel like the guys that are coming in now, like the guys are getting paid are the guys, you know, that are younger in a sense now. Um, you know, you had to pay your dues before, right? Now kind of getting paid off of uh, potential and uh, what you could do and the way the CBAs all, uh, you know, changed a bit. So, um yeah, I had decent relationships with both of them, but anything uh, you learned from Hitchcock? Yeah, ba like 
def- on the defensive side of the puck for sure. Uh, he used the term of uh, you know getting above the puck. You know, being above the puck, your first step should be above the puck, so you can take a good angle on the back check and stuff like that. What does that um, mean? Because I don't, I, I I've heard that, but I don't even know what that means. So say if somebody's wheeling the net, you don't want to chase him behind the net. You know, you want to get above him, get it back above the puck. And especially if you're, you know, get back above the guy that you're checking or whoever it is. So you can take a good angle and try and disrupt them, you know? Um, so defensive like side, defensive so side he of the really, puck. He really, he really, he really, yeah. Just, yeah. Defensively getting the puck back. Like he was, he, he was really being, he was really on that, like being intense and, 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 and hunting the puck down, you know, and, and doing it the proper way. So everybody was on the same page and, you know, he held the accountable. We had a ton of meetings as lines and stuff. Like we were a younger group. My line uh, played with Jeff Carter and RJ Umberger, and we would have meetings all the time just to keep you keep in line and stuff and uh, working hard on both sides of the puck. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a big fan of actually meetings. I, I just don't want them to be too long. You know what I mean? I, want, <laughs> yeah. I always would call when I was coaching in Cape Cod, I would call meetings every day. I would say, we're going to have a meeting today. And you, and the biggest thing about calling a meeting is you want to make sure everybody's following the rules, like getting there early, sitting there waiting for you. And sometimes I just walk in and I go, all right, yeah, I just want to make sure you guys were out of bed. <laughs> so listen, I want to talk a little bit more about the Flyers, actually. Um, I don't feel like you got a, 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 a – I mean, I played in Philly, so mm-hmm. – I think they're fucked up out there as far as, uh, like, Bobby Clark and, whole, like, all these guys that have been there for so long, uh, they've never won. They never have good teams. They spend all this money. All the, It's like the Rangers. What do you think the problem with – as an organization – excuse me, I'm starting to get buzzed up. As an organization, what is the problem with the Philadelphia Flyers? And I'll tell you what I think if you want to know. I don't know, man. Like, honestly, like – they haven't won they haven't, since fucking they until they, they, have, they bullied everyone had, to win. They've always had great teams and uh, just seem, couldn't seem to finish it off. But, you know, at times uh, – Who was your goalie? You know, we had uh, – our goalie was uh, Robert Esch. Yeah, Robert Esch and, uh, and Tiro Um We had a decent team. We just – we played Buffalo that year in the playoffs and uh, they beat us four games to two. They were a pretty, pretty good team at that time. You know, uh, we just couldn't – we couldn't pull it off. But – you know, we had, you know, Peter had some issues with his feet, uh, Forsberg. So that's a huge guy in our lineup. What was the story there? They couldn't get uh, skates to, to, you know, fit them or they. No, uh, I, I think it was like ankle or foot. Something was, something was wrong with a bone in his foot or something like that. So yeah, he had a bunch. He had, I remember seeing one day after practice, he had a whole bin full of skates, all different types of models, like through Bauer, you know, to see which one felt okay. Um, so yeah, he was hurt. He was playing through an injury, through injuries and stuff. You ever get lace a, bite? As a warrior, you ever get lace yeah, bite? Course, it's course, fucking yeah. horrible. It's the worst. Yeah, it's the worst <laughs> thing. So I'm thinking this guy got lace bite. Um, yeah, man. no, 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 no. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. I wasn't. There. I was only there for about a year and a half. So. Um, Do you feel like you're impatient? They, they, had, they haven't won, so they want to win, right? Yeah, and it's kind of crazy. So yeah, things change. Uh, we're talking if you 50, win, if you win, you know, things things usually stick stick together back then. But yeah, I don't know. We had a good team, but I don't know what it was. You know, they they obviously had a certain style that they want to play. You know, and at first, when I first got there, they, you know, I didn't know if I was going to even play because the way I, you know, my style is different, right? So, but what actually, ended up, ended, up, ended up working out. I'm a puck possession guy. I like to, I like to, you know, when I played, I like to have the puck on my stick. Yeah, you don't like to it. dump it in. <laughs> you no, know? I don't like to dump it in too much. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I don't no. think that's the spot. Maybe, maybe got in trouble a couple times, you know, back then. What would you wheel it, it back? It them. Start ragdolling yeah. it back? Yeah, like if I if I had a little space on a D and I could get him to get his feet below, you know, towards his dots, you know, and I didn't have anything, I would shut it down and come back up the wall and wait for late guys and – and stuff like that, and kind of. When you say maybe, feet towards his dots, you mean to get him to turn? No, like I would if I had if he didn't have a good gap on me, you know, and he was threatened by the speed. If I came with at, at, with speed at him, and I knew like, okay, I probably can't get around to the net. I can't go to the net. Like it's, it's not there. So then I would, you know, hit the brakes and come back up the wall and delay and stuff like that. 
Um, I like to do that. I, I didn't want to give it away unless I could put it on someone's stick, you know, or get a shot on net. What, um, so when you came down on a D-man, you knew you could beat him one-on-one no matter who it was if you had a gap, if you had some space? Yeah, not necessarily even beat him and go by him. Like, I feel like a lot of kids, even today's game, I work with kids now um, and helping them. Can you tell us about things. that real quick? So we, so if there's kids in the Chicago area who want to contact you, and, and, and how, do we, how do they yeah, do Yeah, I, tra- I train all different ages here from, you know, little guys to, to college players. A couple, uh, you know, in the summers, maybe a couple skates with some older, you know, pro guys that are around that live here. Um, but, yeah, no, I enjoy working with, with all the kids and, and being How on do the they get in touch with Nico Dimitrakis to get, to get to work with you? Um, don't be shy. Nico. Well, I'm it actually, what's no, it, what's actually, it's actually, it's word of mouth. I don't have a website or anything. I so just, what's your phone number then? Let's get these kids <laughs> to work with Nico Dimitrakis. They, they, the, you're the best dude. I want these kids in Chicago to know you're the best to work with. So how do they work with you? How do they get in touch with you? They got to email me. All right. What's your email? Nico Dimitrakos hockey at Gmail. Can you spell that for me? My brother. N I K O D I M I T R A K O S hockey at gmail.com. All right, everybody, you can see how humble Nico is. He was one of the best hockey players to ever play the game, okay? <laughs> he was that good, okay? I'm the head of testify to that. He's the only NHL player ever to come out of Somerville, Massachusetts, okay? Here we go. We're going to leave. Uh, we're going to leave. Oh, you were in bingo for a little? Oh, you, oh let's yeah, talk about yeah. the Chicago Wolves. Yeah. It was awesome, yeah, right? No, I, uh, yeah, so after Philly, I came to Chicago. Um, they had a great team. Awesome coach, John Anderson. I love the Great guy. organization to play. The best place to play in the American best League. Best place, for sure. 100%. Shout out to you yeah. guys. Um, we had a good run that year. We went to the Western Conference Final and uh, got beat by uh, Hamilton. Carey Price was a rookie, actually. Okay. Played well, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, he, he, was, he was great. And uh, No, but I had a great time here. I got to play with an ex-teammate, Corey LaRose. Yep. Here in Chicago. Guy. Then, I played uh, with Corey yeah. and Hartford. Yep. And then um, two UNH guys that we played against, you know, a lot at Maine, uh, Darren Hadar and Jason Krog, two excellent players. Like, Jason Krog, very, excellent player. Yep. Very smart guy, uh, yep, hockey good players. Kid. Yep. Um, yeah, we had a good group. Uh, Freddie Brathwaite was our goalie. Yep. 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 Um, well, t- hey, Grant Fuhr, Pokey Reddick, Freddie Brathwaite. Uh, let me keep going. I can, oh, um, uh, Malcolm Subban, how many black holes are we going to get that are unbelievable? Freddie Brathaway was awesome, too. He was a fucking dynamite. Weeksy, Weeksy, great, um, great goalie. There's another one, too. It's killing me right now. He's a, he's a funny hand. Uh, I played against him in the minors. Anyways, what did you think about uh, Chicago as a city when you first got there? Were you like, holy uh, shit, it's well, spread out, right? So, at that time, I had met, uh, I had met somebody, and then uh, sh- she's from Chicago, so – when I got moved here, it was like, it was yeah. Tell us great. about me and your wife. What you were in Vegas? You just met your wife from Chicago. Yeah, when I was in San Jose, I was out in Vegas uh, for a friend's uh, bachelor party, and ended up meeting her. And she she came to San Jose from from Vegas with me. Actually, we just we never left each other's side. And then uh, when I got traded to Chicago, we actually started out at her house that she grew up in, and uh, it was a nice easy transition. And um, I think the practice rink was like 20 minutes. The game rink was 20 minutes the other way. So it was like perfect situation. Couldn't ask for anything better. Got to play in front of her family and stuff, which is cool. Yeah. You know? They get to know you. I was good. Yeah, no, Chicago is an unbelievable city. Like, you know, Boston. Boston's a great city, too. Growing up there was awesome. Hockey's great there. Tough for a guy like you, though, a big superstar, big child prodigy star with all the sports to to, to keep out of the, uh, the limelight. Also, listen, I want to talk one more thing about going to Europe. Uh-huh. Let, actually, let's talk about the year in bingo, though, because you lit it up, dude. You had, uh, 40, you had 20, 20 goals, 20 assists in 64 games and 67 pims. Uh, didn't make the playoffs, so I know you didn't have a lot of line mates that year. Tell me about your time in bingo. Cause, uh, yeah, we had, we had a young team in bingo. It's a good, good experience. Some great guys there, too. Um, we had a rookie no, coach. No, Ottawa didn't, never called you up, Ottawa? No, it didn't work out. I went there. I went there. Uh, Who was the coach there or the GM? Hoping to make, hoping to make the team in camp, and I tore my hip flexor, and then um, just kind of didn't work out. Didn't get the chance to get called up. Uh, the GM at the time was, I think, Murray. Brian, Brian Murray. Murray. Yeah, yeah. 
Who was the yeah, coach? so then after so then after the coach, his name was Corey Clouston. Yeah, I don't know him. Yeah, it was a rookie coach from I think from the dub. Um, but yeah, we had a uh, you know Josh fucking Hennessey. idiot <laughs> Josh Josh Hennessy from the uh, from yes Josh is a buddy of mine. Yeah, um, I don't know if you remember uh, Jeremy Oblonsky. Yep, yep, Yabo, yeah, the, the, the yeah, uh, Trevor Gilly's best friend. Yeah, yeah. So he was on the team, and we had a bunch of young guys, a lot of rookies, a couple of Russian kids. Um, but then after that, yeah, it just didn't work out, and uh, went over to Sweden. Well, before you went to Sweden, I played with you at BU. All right, I remember we used to play for the last goal, and you would score it. I knew you were fucking the real deal when I wanted to be the guy to <laughs> score the last goal, and I considered myself the best out there. And you would score the last goal almost every time. Tell us about being a big game player. What's it take to be a big game player? I Ice you in your want- veins. Yeah, no, you just. That's what you know. got. I don't know what else. I don't know what else you want. Like, don't, no, I mean, sports. twenty NHL guys. At the, no, yeah. no one gave a fuck. But at the end, all twenty guys gave a fuck about getting that last goal, and you did it. Probably 14, 13 out of the fourteen days. <laughs> no, I just always let. I just I wanted to do that stuff as a kid. You know, I wanted to be in that situation. I wanted to. You know, I don't know if it's an attention thing or you, you like the limelight of 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 having the puck on your stick and and taking the last shot or like in basketball, you know, as a kid, a positive three, two, attention one. thing. Good yeah, positive no, a po- attention a thing. Good positive thing. And uh, I just, I wanted to be that guy. Uh, oh, you were. And, you in are. high school, in high school, I had, you know, some good uh, playoff runs at Matt on and then Avon as well. And at, uh, at the university you had of Maine, six obviously. goals in two periods versus Canterbury. I was at the game. <laughs> against Canada, yeah. Six Back goals in, in two periods. I don't think you co- I think you coach sat you for the third because you didn't want to rub it I in. Actually, I actually had a, I had a back spasm. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, third period. I didn't know why you didn't skate. I was like, why? The kid got six goals. They're not sitting them. Yeah, you guys all – and they started to come back too. Listen, what about Europe? Tell us about Europe. Finish it up with Europe uh, and then no, uh, Europe, FF Europe, hockey. Europe, Europe, Europe was great. I went to Sweden the first year in a town called Sheleftia. And um, we actually went to the semifinals that year. We had a great team. Um, it was a great experience. People are so passionate about hockey up there. Um, I like when they small, small town. Yeah, they have. It's like a soccer game, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, in Europe, but but on ice. And uh, no, I had a good run. Played with a couple good uh, uh, Canadian centermen, uh, Brad Moran. And oh, uh, yeah, I played good, in Syracuse. Pretty, pretty up. Columbus, pretty good connection on the ice uh, with him. Uh, and then uh, Kent McDonnell was out there too. Yep, no Kent. Um, so yeah, we had a good run. Um, and then af- after Shaleftia, I went to uh, Russia for a year. Played. How in, was the uh, money? Mos- Make good Moscow. money over there. Yeah, the money. Yeah, the money was good. Tax free <laughs> money. Yeah. I mean, that's what <laughs> we ru- want to know about. The, you ru- get- the, ru- the rubles were good. The rubles <laughs> <were> good. <laughs> when people used to say rubles to me, I'd be like, "They pay you in fucking jewelry." <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was rubies. Rubies, oh, yeah. Oh man. So what? What made you say, "Hey, you know what? I've had enough. I've been, this has been a good role." Well, I, had, I, I had. I hold had on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Nico. Hold on. Yeah. How many yeah. years was it? Where in the exactly in from Russia? call? No, from college to the end. Sixteen, right? I I played thirteen years pro. Thirteen, and then four right. in college. Yep. 17 solid straight years. So what yep. made you say, fuck this, I gotta, I, I, I've had enough or what? Well, I started moving around to like different countries, right? So we're in Russia and started having babies. I had a daughter, you know, uh, that's kind of the real reason why I said I wanted to go over there and, and, and try it. I was having a baby at the time and then uh, uh, had another baby and eventually had three daughters and, um, they had congratulations different... they're Thank beautiful you very much yeah beautiful girls and they were they had been going to different schools in different countries and they were getting older and you know there was i think the one year they they were going to stay home right and i just decided like i'm not going to keep going over there without them and and missing things and i think i was 35 at the time so i wanted to get into the hockey you know coaching and stuff like that and, and helping kids and so i did that and um yeah, it was great. You know, obviously, missed the game and everything and, and missed being around your buddies and, and in the locker room, traveling on the road and um, getting that excitement of playing. It's tough to tough to match, you know? Yeah, definitely. I really miss yeah. it. I think yeah. I always will. 
Well, what yeah. about life after hockey? Like, is this – I know you made a lot, a lot of money playing hockey, dude. I followed your career. I was a huge fan. Um, I – you – I mean, not that many guys have ever impressed me out of Massachusetts. I've been the best. And uh, when I saw you, I was like, oh, he's, he could be better than me. <laughs> I'm like, this kid's <laughs> awesome. You're and, a great uh, player too, Billy, though. Yeah. One of the I, best I, skaters I, I've ever seen. I can't believe um, um, just what a good guy you are and um, how strong you were to get out of where you had to get out of uh, in life. Um, I know some of us, when we grew up in our hometowns, um, it's being a big fish in a small pond. And I think that was kind of uh, always held against you. I think a lot of people uh, really uh, wanted to be Nico Dimitrakis, and there can only be one Nico Dimitrakis. There is only one Nico Dimitrakis. By far the most talented hockey player that ever come out of Boston, Massachusetts, Nico Dimitrakis. I want to thank you for your time, and uh, I love you. And you have really impressed me as a person and a hockey player over my lifetime and I want to I want to just give you kudos bro and uh say thank you for doing this with me I appreciate it I thank you too for having me and uh hope uh you guys have a great success, uh, success with this Listen, uh, do, you, do you mind if we we reach back out to you and call you and, and check in with you and uh, maybe sure. you could be a, a friend of the show sure that's Definitely. awesome and listen Definitely, dude bro. I I love you I love you and I love just want to let buddy. you know that Best and uh I knew you were going to do my show when I asked Billy. I knew you would do it. And um, listen, yeah, bro. Billy, uh, you, uh, you were always great to me. And, uh, you know, you treat people how you want to be treated, you know. Uh, yeah. You were always great to me. You always uh, had my back. And, you know, I got your back, buddy, too. So I still do, bro. Let's talk soon. Yeah. I love you. All right, you. buddy. Take See care. Ya. Love you, too, buddy. Thank Take you, it easy. Nico. See you.